Next up, I think we have our uh, Lauren, Dr. Lauren Byrne and Dr. Rebecca Mason who will talk about work that they're doing combating juvenile onset hunting disease, sort of something that HDEO is also involved with. So Lauren and Rebecca, you wanna take it away? It happens. Yeah. Everybody, um, I should start sharing on the screen, but um, while I do that, I wanna say a huge thank you to Cheryl um, and Megan. Um, we have the privilege of working with Cheryl in our family advisory group for this initiative that we're about to tell you about. Um, and I can honestly say Megan in, is still providing a lot to the, the HD community um, and Cheryl. So um, it's amazing to, to have her to, to present. Um, can I check everyone can see my screen? Okay, yeah, cool. So I'm Dr. Lauren Byrne. I am I'm part of HGO as a board member. Um, and I'm uh, a researcher, HD researcher at the University College London. I'm also a HD family member. Um, and we have been working very hard on a new initiative for juvenile onset hunting disease called Join HD. Um, and I'm joined with our um, wonderful study coordinator, Dr. Rebecca Mason, who will join me um, and take over halfway through the talk. So let's get going. Um, so HCO have always been have been supporting young people impacted by Huntington's disease for uh, 10 years now. It's a 10 year um, uh, 10 year anniversary. Um, and it's it's been very pa a passionate thing to be able to support, educate and empower young people. Um, and Join HD is no, no different from any of, of anything else we do. Um, we all know, uh, I've heard of Huntington's Korea and the idea that there's this movement disorder, um, Korea being this jerky dance-like movements. Um, and you heard from, from Cheryl's story about how people often get mistaken with them described as drunk. Um, but we know now that it's Huntington's disease as there's so much more to it. Um, we've got the behavioral and cognitive dysfunction as, as Cheryl mentioned, Megan struggling with um, her homework in university. So the Huntington's gene, I wanted to talk about the discovery of the Huntington's gene itself as it um, highlights an important thing about the HD community and is this very collaborative aspect of that, about it. Um, back in um, 1993, uh, led by Nancy Wexler. Um, there was a, a, a huge team of efforts that helped discover the gene. And this was 58 scientists across the globe and over 12,000 army members to discover the single gene that causes Huntington's disease. Um, and why this is so important, it, it's why we call Huntington's disease the most curable in, curable brain disease because we know what causes every case of Huntington's disease. It's um, more than we can say than a lot of other um, brain diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Every case of Huntington's disease is caused by this um, expansion of CHU peaks in the Huntington gene. And just to remind you, the Huntington gene is the recipe that it helps the, or tells the body how to build the Huntington protein. Um, and we all probably know about the mutation that causes Huntington's disease is these expanded letter repeats of CAG letters. So over 36 is causes this mutated Huntington protein. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you know that there's a relationship with the length of um, these repeats to how early you can get the disease. So you can see in in this graph, that the most common CAG repeats of that causes adult onset Huntington's disease is in this 40 to 50 range. And down here, you can see the range within the below the age of 21. So, um, which, which, as you now know, is juvenile onset Huntington's disease, or that is, is the, the definition. Um, and you can see, even just from this figure, that how 
you know, sparse the points are, and that's because it's extremely rare. It's about 5% of Huntington's disease cases. It's also can present quite differently from Huntington's disease. You can see um, this is a, a, a person with juvenile onset antigens and how they have a lot more slowness of movement and stiffness, but you'll hear a bit more about symptoms and managing those, I think, in Margaret's talk next. But overall, there's no drugs to, to slow JOHD down or adult onset HD. Um, and this rarity of the disease means it's really hard to, to study and to, whereas with, with adult onset Huntington's disease, since the gene has been discovered itself, there have been a number of, of studies that have been looking at people that carry the Huntington gene and that don't, that has allowed us to know a lot about what happens in, in adult onset Huntington's. But this is, hasn't really been the case for JOHD. Um, and this lack of knowledge um, contributes to the fact that it's it's very hard to diagnose. You know, um, it it can take years for some children to get diagnosis because, as as Cheryl mentioned, this um, doctors want to be really sure that the condition or the symptoms that they're seeing are actually Huntington's disease rather than say a another childhood disorder. Um, and this this means children might not be um, getting diagnosed quickly enough. And then there's a lot less expertise in the area as well for how to treat and what is the best way to treat them. So there's no drugs and, and there's also currently no trials that are including pediatric patients. Um, and this all leads to, to all these families feeling so isolated. I know what it's like to feel isolated even with adult onset HD and the lack of knowledge and awareness in your day-to-day -day life and how that can impact you. But this is even worse for those with, with JOHD. So this is where um, we have come in with joint HD, um, based on this idea that patient registries um, have been known to really help, particularly in the rare disease field, help get numbers and knowledge uh, for these um, hard to reach populations. Um, help improve our knowledge of the disease and, and, and create, um, improving diagnosis and clinical care, and also creating support um, and connecting families um, around the world. So I'm going to hand over to Rebecca, who is going to tell you specifically on our registry called Joy HD. Thank you, Lauren. So um, Join HD is a global patient registry that HDO have set up for families impacted by juvenile onset Huntington's disease. Um, the aims of Join HD are to build a community of families impacted by JOHD from around the world, um, to increase knowledge of the disease, to facilitate future research and to identify unmet needs. So with JOHD being so rare, um, we hope that creating this global registry is going to allow us to recruit large enough numbers to collect meaningful information about the disease and to assist in the running of um, future research and future drug trials. So Join HD is a very collaborative project um, and there's input from many experts in the field of JOHD. So um, Dr. Lauren Byrne, who's just speaking, is the chief investigator of Join HD. And that means that she's got overall responsibility for the registry. Um, I'm the registry coordinator, which um, makes me responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the project. So at HDO, we also have um, Dr. Bonnie, who spoke earlier, um, who's been very involved through her role as co-chair of the um, HDO research committee. So as well as the team at HDO, um, Join HD has a scientific oversight committee, who you can see on the slide here. Um, and we meet regularly to provide expert advice and guidance on the scientific aspects of the registry. The members bring extensive experience in HD, um, JHD, paediatric neurology and paediatric bioethics. And then in addition to this, we have a really fantastic family advisory group who provide advice to us based on their invaluable lived experience of JOHD. Next slide, please, Lauren. Thank you. 
so um, how does Join HD work? Uh, so Join HD is a remote registry, so it is carried out online. This allows participants to take place from their own home, which removes the barrier of needing to live close to a study site. It's open to both people with Joe HD, their caregivers, and also people who have previously cared for a loved one with Joe HD. The registry will be carried out in three stages, with increasing information being collected at each stage. So at pre-enrollment, potential participants register their interest in taking part and provide contact information, which enables us to get in touch with them. Then at stage one, um, demographics are collected, along with information about the links participants have with the HD community. Then at stage two, we're planning to collect information about patient and caregivers' experiences of JOHD and information about medical history. And then the last stage, stage three, is going to incorporate a clinician-led interview and information about family history of the disease. Pre-enrollment opened in 2021, um, and we're very excited to have launched stage one um, just over the last month. So the process of a participant taking part in Join HD is shown on this slide. So potential participants um, register their interest by giving us their contact details, um, which is done through Microsoft Forms. And then once we receive these details, we can provide further information on the project by email. And if the potential participant is still interested in taking part, then we set up a screening call. So that'll be with the potential participant and myself. So in this call, um, I'll explain the project in more details, confirm eligibility and answer any questions that participants will have. Following this call, um, the participant would then receive the information that they need to self-enroll on the Join HD website and complete their stage one questionnaires. And then when further stages of Join HD become available, so stage two and stage three, or any other research opportunities for JHD come up, um, we we'll, would get back in touch with participants to see if they're interested in taking part in these opportunities. Um, so as I said, um, the pre-registration is done using Microsoft Forms, uh, which is shown in the middle of this slide here. The form can be accessed through um, lots of different routes. So with the, on the HDO website, we've got a page about Join HD, so the link is on there. Um, we have different promotional materials that contain this QR code, so that can be scanned. We've got a booth here um, this weekend that contains links to get onto the pre-registration form, um, and then direct links in places like our email signatures. So, um, as I said a little earlier, with the rarity of JOHD, we really hope that the global nature of this project will allow us to recruit large enough numbers to really make a difference. Um, therefore, it's really important for us to enrol as many eligible families as we can to make the registry and the project a success. So in order to do this, we're planning to utilize existing HDO contacts, as well as working closely with specialist HD clinics and centers, HD charities, associations, and networks. Um, we're also going to inform people of the registry through websites and social media, support groups, and hopefully by word of mouth. We um, really hope that people who do take part will tell anyone that they know who might be eligible about it. And through those different avenues, we want to make as many people aware of the project as we can. So since pre-registration opened last year, um, we've had pre-registrations from 37 families in 10 different countries around the world, which um, is an excellent start. We're delighted with that. And we're going to be working hard to build on this foundation and get more numbers from here. And then since stage one opened last month, so we've got 12 participants currently enrolled. Um, and this is an ongoing process with more participants being enrolled at each week. So of those currently taking part, you can see on this slide, we've um, got quite an even split of patients, caregivers and previous caregivers. Um, and we've enrolled participants from the United States, Scotland and Ukraine so far. The gender split of patients has been quite evenly balanced so far um, and caregivers has been predominantly female, but these are very early figures and you know, I just like to give a taste of where we're at at the moment. Okay, so um, that's 
where we are up to um, and we'd really encourage you to take part in the project if you're eligible or if you know any families um, who could be or different different ways of getting the word out there we'd really appreciate if you could do that or let us know ideas um, yeah a lot of this is about getting information out to as many people as we can uh, if anyone has any questions I welcome them to email me and my email is rebecca at hgo.org and I'll pass back over to Lauren um, sorry, I'm very bad at, at timing <laughs> science <laughs> transitions for you, Rebecca. Um, uh, just last, we'd like to thank everybody, particularly your um, the family advisory group and the scientific oversight committee, um, and our sponsors who are, are making this possible. Um, we are, and particularly the, the families of JHD, um, who we are hoping to do this for. Um, and all the HCEO staff and volunteers. Special thanks to Cat Mark. Martin, who was really um, uh, instrumental in getting this off the ground and who came up with the original idea for this. And um, for anybody if of the professional side of things who are seeing patients, please do get in touch with us if you want any materials to share. Um, and we can provide those um, and we will take any questions. All right. Thank you for the wonderful talk. Um, there's a question. Oh, it just says Dr. Mason is quite knowledgeable, which I definitely agree with. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there agree. was a question. Yeah, there was a question in the chat asking for the registry site, but I think Healy has answered that as well. So I noticed Thank there you. was a, quite a bit of spread in terms of countries. Are there more people reaching out since you last checked? What's the global scope? So um, in terms of the pre-registration, so we've got people from um, the US and Brazil, Scotland, England, France, the Netherlands, Ukraine, India, Pakistan and Russia. So they're, they're all the ones, people who have been in touch with us so far to express their interest. And a lot of the work we're going to be doing over the next few months is um, targeting the different countries through their local HD associations and yeah trying to get into as many countries as we can we really want this to be um a global project and I think for it to make a big difference that's that's what we need to do so that is our goal nice important so to probably comment that we are focusing on English first um so there's going to be a bias towards English countries but we have full plans to translate this to at the very least Spanish and um Portuguese and work with um, other communities in the area. Um, I've been in touch with Factory H as well to go into South America and, and really get help from, from that part of the world. Um, but yeah, I think we're seeing the most of the signups have been coming from the US and the UK, which makes sense because that's where we've been the most active, I think, on, on social and that. So we're really hoping we can um, iteratively get this kind of into all the more, more accessible to other countries. Yeah. So any plans to translate the registry or are you going to yep. lean on more the country associations to do that? Um, so we will, but it will be an achieved kind of process because of resources, basically. Yeah. So it's just, um, I think for stage one, it'll be pretty easy to do because it's not um, a lot to translate. Um, but the thing is, we need help with translator to do the screening call. If, if someone struggles with English. So it's just some some practical things that we need to work out, but we are fully fully um, intend to do as many languages as we can. Um, All right, I'll check the chat. I don't think there's any other question. There's an offer to help with translation to do Spanish. So maybe- Please get in touch with us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, Rebecca's email is in the chat already. So reach out to her, but thank you. Thank you again. It's a great initiative. I think it's much needed as well. Uh, GHG is pretty overlooked. Yeah, I, I was at um, the CHGI Therapeutics Conference last week and presented uh, Join HD, and it was great to see how much of the professional community as well getting behind it. So we're hoping to have more interactions with them or that will help with all the recruitment rollouts. Yep, sounds good. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mason and Dr. Byrne for 
Evgeni Nobru Yoguchoy'un içtiği. 